for team building activities to work, you can't just understand each other. You have to understand each other's behavior. Hey leader, David Burke is here, organizational psychologist and author of five best-selling books on helping leaders and teams do their best work ever. And one of my deeply held beliefs about teams is that talent doesn't make the team, the team makes the talent. The culture of the team determines whether or not talented individuals can actually take their knowledge, skills, and abilities and turn them into performance. And even mediocre performers or people with mediocre levels of talent will perform better when they're on a great team. And that makes building teamwork, building collaboration, and building the skill of understanding each other and how to collaborate best with each other paramount for leaders. Not only to turn mediocre players into talented players, but to let talented players do their best work. And one of my favorite exercises, the single best team building activity for doing this, in my opinion, is what we call a manual of me. And a manual of me is, is exactly what it sounds like. It's a user's manual to the author. It is a tool that others on the team can use for understanding that particular person. And when you get everyone on the team constructing their own manual of me, sharing it out, having that discussion, and then having that tool somewhere where everyone can reference, you get huge gains in collaboration and huge gains in performance. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about how to construct a manual of me and how to run your whole team through that exercise. And it focuses really on four main questions inside the manual of me. Let's get started. So before we get into the four specific questions, we wanna set this activity up. So we wanna tell the team that this is what we're doing. We wanna tell them that we're gonna do an activity to help build understanding of each other, and we're gonna give them the template I'm about to walk through. And by the way, check the link in the description if you want a PDF version of this that'll guide you through not only how to do this with your team, uh, but also a worksheet that they can fill out. And the idea is you're gonna send them those instructions and these four questions ahead of time and allow them to construct a document, a manual of me. You can tell them to personalize it, add pictures and biographical details if they want, but we're really focused on answers to four opening questions. Now, question number one is, I'm at my best when blank. These are all gonna be fill in the blank questions. And the idea behind I'm at my best when blank is you're focused in on the strengths and preferred activities of the team. So when are people performing at their best? Not only what types of tasks, which relates to their own strengths, their knowledge, skills, and abilities, but also what types of environments do they perform well in? You know, we've just gone through this giant sort of work from home experiment over the last three years, and people have had the opportunity to experiment with a lot of different types of environments. And the hope is that as people are returning back to the office, at least somewhat, and collaborating in person, we have a broader discussion about what the right environment for each person is. Some people thrive in a high energy, open office environment where they can just uh, jump and grab people and ask them specific questions and get little resources they need. And other people look at that exact same experience as an interruption factory. And they do their best work when they're in a, a closed private environment. Doesn't necessarily mean they have to work from home, but they need to be able to shut the door and block out other people to get into focused mode. And so that's the idea behind this question. I'm at my best when blank, not only the types of tasks that I'm doing, but also the environments that I'm in. Now that leads right to the second question, which is I'm at my worst when blank. This is the exact opposite, right? What are the tasks that people get asked to do that they really struggle with? A real key that someone is at their worst at something is what are those tasks that people just don't wanna do? You know, you think about your own to-do list and there's something that just stays at the bottom of that to-do list and never finds its way to the top until it's absolutely necessary. Most of the time, the reason for that is that you don't enjoy doing the task or that your knowledge, skills, and abilities are a mismatch for the task. And so just thinking about trying to accomplish it brings you dread. In fact, it's probably both of those things. Now, in I'm at my worst, we also want to be talking about environmental factors. What, what are those environments or those types of situations when people are at their worst? Some people are at their best when they're under a deadline and other people freeze up and break down. And we want to have that conversation. So the idea here, we're two questions into our core four. The idea is that we've talked about not 
not only strengths and weaknesses, but environments and working uh, preferences that make people feel strong and do their best work, and also environments that make people underperform. I met my best when, I met my worst when. And that'll lead us to our third question, which is, you can count on me to blank. Again, these are all fill in the blanks, but you can count on me is really about how my knowledge, skills, and abilities, and my talents can help the team. What is my best contribution to the team in my own opinion? What are the things you can count on me to do? And if you need help, you can count on me to be able to help you in. You know, a lot of times, especially when you've got teams that are not co-located 100% of the time, help doesn't get offered as often because we don't know who to go to for help. But also, it doesn't get pro-offered often because we don't know how to signal for help or, or we don't even know how to have this conversation about when you need help and who can help you. And so the idea behind you can count on me is to let people put it out front right off the bat. If you need help with this, if this is something you struggle with, or if this is something you need me to take more responsibility in so that the team can thrive, you can count on me for that. And the fourth and final question is the inverse of you can count on me, which is what I need from you is blank. So this is the inverse. This is where do I struggle? Where are the areas that I need someone who's strong elsewhere in the team to help me out? Where are the places I can already anticipate that I'm gonna be needing to ask you for help? I wanna get that out in the open ahead of time so that when I come to ask for help, right, it's not a surprise to anyone. Now, the idea here is, again, we're going to have this inside of a conversation, and by the end of the conversation, we might even change work roles based on those two questions. We might even find out that some people are saying, you can count on me for some tremendous things, and then they're not actually assigned to do those things, and other people are assigned to do things that are actually in there, what I need from you is. So we may end up, when we're having this conversation as a team, switching out those roles because we're taking the time not only to talk about strengths and weaknesses, but to talk about what I can provide and what I need help with. Now you can ask just those four, and I work with a lot of teams that we do just those four, and that sparks an amazing conversation. But there's a ton of other questions you can ask based on the industry you're in, the team that you have, how well they know each other or not. So you can say how I like to receive feedback is blank. You can say my quirks are blank, my pet peeves are blank. You could say something you don't know about me is blank, something that energizes me is blank blank. You could even talk about ideal working schedules and ideal working tools. There are all sorts of additional questions you can ask. Let your own experience be the guide of what you want to ask. But the important thing is we hit those core four questions. And then when it comes time, when all of these are prepared and we're here in our meeting with the team, when it comes time to share out those answers, we're just going to go person by person. If you're watching this and you're the leader of the team, you're the manager, establish trust by going first and showing people kind of what you expect in that share. And then after each person shares, we don't just go to the next person, we leave time for discussion. Because as you say this, people are gonna say, you know, I didn't know that about you. Or they might say, you know, you said you can count on me for this and I've never even thought to ask you for that. Or, or the opposite, you said what I need from you is this and I always thought you were strong there. So you're gonna have a lot of conversation after each one of these and that's okay, allow that time for conversation. Because in that conversation, that's how people think through how to take the information they're processing and turn it into new behaviors or changes in behavior on the team. And that's what we really want. I think a reason a lot of the personality tests and different team building activities don't work is that while we discuss each other's differences, we don't discuss how those differences change our behavior in the future. And that's the goal of manuals of me and sharing them out. And that's what makes it the single best team building activity out there. Now, after all of those discussions are done, you've got all of these documents and they can be PDFs, Word documents, they can be PowerPoints, they can be videos, whatever you as a team decide you wanna to do to create these. The important thing is you collect them and you put them somewhere the whole team can access, whether that's a shared folder on the company's intranet, whether that's in Dropbox, uh, you know, publicly, whatever you wanna to do to make sure people can access them. Because people are gonna keep thinking. I mean, the idea here is that we provoked a lot of thoughts about each other, uh, and we're thinking a lot of thoughts about our coworkers that we didn't know before, and we're gonna wanna reference back to them. Especially when a teammate's behavior is sort of puzzling, uh, sometimes the first place people go on teams that have done Manual of Me is back to wherever we kept that resource 
available for everyone. It's also really useful because as you have new members of the team join the team, you don't have to redo the whole exercise. You could just take them back to those shared documents and tell them, hey, this is what we do for all of our teams. So this is the user's manual for everybody on the team. And by the way, we would love for you to share one as soon as you're comfortable doing that with us. So you want this to be not only a conversation, but a a conversation that keeps going. <laughs> so you want it to be a constant conversation so that we're constantly making those tweaks and improvement in our collaboration. And when you do that, when you break down this manual of B and get your team talking about when they're at their best, when they're at their worst, what you can count on them for, and what they need from the team is, when you go through all of that, what you're gonna find is that people really do change how they behave around each other for the better. Teams really start to understand where they can provide help to each other and what they can trust other people to get done without constantly looking over their shoulder and checking in. And that creates an environment where the team can do its best work because the team becomes a place where every single person feels like they can do their best work ever. Oh, and by the way, the Manual of Me is, in my opinion, the single best team building activity out there, but it only really works if you've established trust on your team. So if you feel like you're not there yet, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video here on how to build trusting teams.